Good evening, all. Hey, I have an integer expression here, and we're trying to establish that it's composite for natural numbers greater than or equal to two. Okay. Now, first thing I want to say about it, it's pretty, it's pretty clear that if n is equal to two, uh, you get, uh, let me, let me get the marker work in here. Um, say if n is equal to two, you would get, uh, uh, two to the fourth plus four squared, right? And of course that's equal to uh, 32. And that's certainly a composite number. And you can see for any other even number, you're definitely gonna get a composite number. So that's why I stated that it's, that it's obvious. It's kind of arrogant to say that, but it's definitely true. Uh, if N is even, uh, you're definitely dealing with a composite number because it's an even number much bigger than two. All right, now, so we're gonna make the assumption that N is odd and uh, greater than or equal uh, to three, all right? And uh, now in that case, if N is greater than or equal to three or N is odd, uh, an odd number raised to the fourth power is still an odd number. So this entire expression right here is gonna be odd. Okay, it's gonna be odd. And y'all, by the way, a composite number, just to be sure we're on, uh, is a number like six. You know, six is, is composed of two numbers other than six in itself, namely three and two. So. It's not, a, it's kind of a, composite is kind of an antonym for a prime, right? Seven would be a prime because you can only write it as seven times one, right? So that's gonna play into what we're gonna be doing because we're gonna be trying to show that the factors themselves, when we get the algebra done, can't be equal to one basically. And that'll, that'll prove that the expression is composite. Now, so the fact that this expression is odd is, is kind of useful just an example would be like if you say you have a square like 49 7 squared is 49 right and then you want to subtract another square we'll call it 36 that's 7 squared minus 6 squared is 49 minus 36. notice you get an odd number there and that's generally true you know if you if you uh, the difference between the squares uh, two consecutive squares is, is always going to be an odd number and often between any two squares is it's Going to be an odd number not always the case like 100 minus 4 is x equal to 96 which is not an odd number but in any event we can notice that what i do right here this is the expression we're trying to establish that this is composite and so we can actually write it as the difference of two squares it turns out it's not surprising based on this numerical example right here now let me make sure that's convincing i'm going to come down here and actually um, expand this out and go through why it's true um, so we have, I'm gonna write down the, the expression, the binomial n squared plus two raised to the n power. Quantity squared, right? All right, yeah, I'm just gonna use the well-known algebraic identity that a plus b quantity squared is a squared plus two ab plus b squared. And so if we square n squared, we certainly get n to the fourth, okay? Which is nice, because there's n to the fourth right there, right? Now we're gonna write down the plus two AB part. So we're gonna have plus two times N squared um, times two to the N, two raised to the N power, right? And then finally, if you square this, now it takes a little bit to see that, but that's the same as four raised to the N. And that's not that hard to see, right folks? If you if you square this, you would get two raised to the two n, but you can bring the two over to the two and make it two squared, which would make it four to the n, just laws of exponents. Okay, but watch what this is equal to. Okay, um, n to the fourth. Now, laws of exponents here, there's a one right there, right, folks? And so you can write this as plus n squared still hangs around, right? Plus n squared. And then the, this one adds to that n laws of exponents, two to the n plus one. Okay, and then of course the four to the n is still hanging around. Okay, now that's, that's nice because what do you see right up here? That's exactly what we have going on right here, this two to the n plus one, so you can see I just showed you that when you expand this out, you get all of this stuff. Now, these are the only terms that we're interested in, right? The end of the fourth term 
in the four to the n term, we have to subtract this this term right here. We have to subtract this term away, which is exactly what we did right here. You see, you see the minus sign there. So we have equality right here. N to the fourth plus four to the n is equal to this expression, which is you can write it as the difference of two squares. Now this part's a little sneaky. Remember, if you apply laws of exponents. Uh, to this, the two just multiplies times n plus one to give you n plus one, which is that, right? Isn't that kind of cool? So that's what happened there. Uh, two to the n plus one over two squared is two to the n plus one. All right, and of course, uh, n squared is n squared, as you see right over here. So we've written it as the difference of two squares, and now we have it in the form, uh, if you want to call this a squared minus b squared here. call this object a squared minus b squared and remember it is still equal to the thing we're interested in right all right this part right here is going to be your a plus b right a plus b it's kind of neat how this works out sometimes these differences of two squares aren't so easy to see because there's other stuff going on underneath the hood you know but you have uh, a minus b right here right so lo and behold, we've written n to the fourth plus four to the n as the product of two factors. Now we've seen we can't have a one, right? Because that would introduce the possibility of it being a prime number. It wouldn't guarantee it, but we got to watch out for ones because then we'd have to stop and check this to see if it was prime or not, right? Which is hard to do, right? And so that's why if we can show that this second factor here, this second factor, y'all notice I use the green plus and minus here. If we can show that this second factor is greater than one, that'll mean that this factor is also greater than one. And we, uh, there's no way that it could be a prime number that would force it to be composite, which is what this is saying right here. So you see, we're one step away from being done with the problem. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm, this isn't a, what I would call rigorous, but we'll do the case N equals three here. Okay. Now there's probably, I'm still thinking about how to do it Formally, but nobody, you almost got to believe that n squared plus 2 to the n is bigger than this expression because you're you're knocking down the exponent here. And this is just n and this is a squared term and an exponential term. But in any event, if you let n equals 3, 3 squared is 9. 2 cubed is 8. Okay, and then right here we have minus three times, and y'all let me write this out, that'll be two squared. Y'all notice here's where the n equals odd is important, because if n were even, you would have, say if n were four, you would have two to the five halves, and we don't want to mess with that. We're dealing with integers or natural numbers here, right? So anyway, the n equals odd is consistent with it, with this fractional exponent. Now, um, so that's 17 minus 12 is equal to five, so yippee. So what we know is for n equals three is this factor right here would be exactly five. And this would be something larger than that, right? But that would mean that n to the fourth plus four to the n was uh, was composite, okay? So we, we proved what we set out to prove. Now, again, this isn't rigorous, but if you believe it for three, you would definitely believe it for five, you know, because you would have five squared, two to the fifth, that's 25 plus 32 is already 57, right? Which is gonna be a much bigger number than what you put there. Now I'm gonna think about how to prove it more rigorously, but I think this constitutes a proof based on the fact you have a square term and an exponential term, all, all going to be positive numbers. So you subtract away this where the exponential term has an exponent that's been scaled down. So anyway, I hope hope you like that. This is this is a non-Sophie Germain. You may be familiar with Sophie Germain identity, famous female mathematician who died way too young for us. There was a Sophie, May, Sophie Germain identity that gets used in a lot of math competitions. Okay, Sophie Germain, and I guess she's, gosh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know her ethnicity, but maybe, I don't I hesitate to say German, but uh, but anyway, uh, let me know what you think, guys. This, again, they, they normally use the identity attributed to her uh, to prove the primality or the composite nature of certain expressions or numbers. Okay, thanks for listening.